Howdy, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is the unpacking of a Celestron Star Sense Explorer LT114AZ. Uh, this was something that was donated to me and uh, my plans are to donate it to some kids that hopefully you know would expand their knowledge and their love for the uh, you know astronomy field so let's take a quick look to see what we got inside um, I'll walk you through what it is that I find and hopefully you'll find it interesting enough um, it's not a very powerful telescope it's um, well, it's definitely a very decent beginner, I think. I've never really used one like this before. I used the 130 AZ in the past, and I found it in my very light polluted area to be uh, extremely uh, useful for a beginner, um, whether you're you know uh, a child or an adult and you want to start with something. Um, show you that. Sorry for the video. I don't do these things very often. I'm not good at them, but hopefully they're good enough for you. Um, so it comes with the phone mount, which does, um, uh, it basically finds uh, stars and uh, it, it, it finds anything in the sky for you, um, as long as you properly align it and you, you, know, you, you do what the instructions say. Um, uh, I know a lot of people online when I had my 130, um, not a lot, but a, a good amount of people were saying that it wasn't working for them very well. Um, I had the same issue uh, the first couple of days when I tried to use it, and then I got a, you know, I got the hang of it. So um, I would say that this specific feature, uh, the Star Sense feature, um, is very, very useful. Uh, it allows you to find things that you have no idea are up in the sky as a beginner and look at them um, and and you know play with it explore it give it time um, but this um, whether this or the 130 th th these are decent starter scopes um, i would say that if you are in uh, a, a dark sky uh, area um, you will find that you could see some decent things with them uh, with this telescope um, i would say the best this is probably for planetary viewing uh, you know maybe um, a little bit of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus. Uh, the moon is definitely going to look decent. Um, they uh, include um, two eyepieces in here and a Barlow lens, which is really cool. Um, the other one did not include a Barlow lens, but um, you will find it. You will find that um, you may need some extra eyepieces to to really get the best out of it. Um, you're not really going to get anything close to a six or an eight inch, but it's um, it's a good start. So let's open it up. Let's see what we have inside. Uh, I am as fresh to this as you are. I'm gonna try to be very nice and gentle about it, because like I said, I'd like to give this to somebody that's going to benefit from starting in this hobby. I don't want it to look ugly. So, is standard documentation um, it actually has the codes on the front so I don't really want to put that on the video because they will be used but you will find your star sense Explorer app uh, code um, your Celestron um, software registration code as well so um, this is good stuff to have this this will actually show you how to uh, put the telescope together too so let's Let's move on to uh, what's inside here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this very well, probably not, but at the bottom over here we have the accessory tray, tripod and mount. Um, on the side here we've got the finder scope, lens cloth, star sense dock tool, uh, KE 10 millimeter eyepiece, KE 25 millimeter eyepiece, two times Barlow, and a locking knob. Um, right in the middle, we have the optical, uh, the OTA uh, optical tube assembly. Uh, we have a locking knob, uh, knob for that as well. And right in the corner over here, 
we have the most important of all things, the empty box. This box contains nothing. It is there to take place so that things don't get uh, rattled around. Um, and it is a very important box. Without that, we would all be sad. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Boy, I feel like we need to take this. Okay. One thing at a time, huh? assembly and all the doodaddies. I'm going to put this guy aside. Most important box. was that the tripod was it was a little bit shaky uh, I, I would probably venture to say that this will be a bit shaky itself so keep in mind this is a beginner telescope so when you do go online and you ask people for advice they're gonna tell you the bad things about it um, and there are plenty of bad things but this is a beginner telescope you're not paying $1,200 for a shaky tripod and a small optical tube, so you know you get what you pay for. Oh, that's fancy. I like that. All right, I'm gonna open these guys apart. I'm gonna leave this in here because I'm gonna put it back together. I just want to set it up so I can show you this stuff. All right, I'm gonna move. tube assembly. Now, I would highly advise anyone that they read the instructions when they put this together, and I venture to say that I would probably be forced to do the same, but just to take it out of the box and show you is not a big deal. All right, put that back in there. This must be a locking knob of sorts that they speak of, so we're going to leave this here for a minute. Here's a rubber band and some tape. Also, the reason I'm opening this up is not just that um, I want to make a video to show you this stuff before I give it to somebody, but um, a lot of the times these things may need to be collimated. And for anybody that doesn't know what that means is basically um, just aligning the mirrors uh, to make sure that when you are viewing something, it is being shown to you at its best. For that, um, I would recommend a Cheshire piece or um, I have two laser collimators that I use um, and you can find information on that online too. They're not expensive, they're probably around 20 bucks if you go on Amazon. But they are useful, just make sure that you know what you're doing when it comes to that because if you do it right, you do it right. If you don't do it right, you will know. All right. There's a lot of packaging I'm gonna have to put back together. This side up, that is, that, those are some good instructions. Okay, take this tape and paper off nice and gently. That's, that's a nice little scope. That can yield you some very interesting 
moon views and such. where the mirror is right in there not bad very clean and very fresh now okay I'll put this guy here and actually let's put it back here for a second let's have a look at what's inside the accessory box. All right. Get that back there. Ah, there we go. This will be our 10 millimeter. Keep in mind these are not that great um they do not include really good equipment in here so even though this is not a very powerful telescope you can buy eyepieces online for anywhere between 20 to 40 dollars that will make this better um, images will be a little bit more clear obviously depending on um, what kind of eyepiece you get you'll get closer or wider fields of view but um, just keep in mind, you know, what they give you, they don't, they don't really give you the best of the best, obviously. It's, it's not a very expensive telescope. I think they go for somewhere around 180 bucks online right now, um, which, you know, it's, it's a lot of money for many, many people. But um, the eyepieces are definitely, I mean, and you can tell from this one, um, it's just plastic and then a little bit of metal down here um, I can actually tell that the difference between these and the 130 that I had is very 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 large um, uh, those are actually somewhat decent eyepieces this is the 25 millimeter eyepiece um, these literally feel like the eyepieces that you could buy for uh, maybe five bucks at a slot meet at best <laughs> um, they're, they're not they're not the real, you know, decent, decent eye pieces, but it'll get you going. You know, it's don't, don't get discouraged. It, they're not garbage. They're just not the things that you can get online. Um, there's a little knob over here. This is actually really well packaged. Uh, I presume that is some sort of a, ah, that's a screwdriver set key. That'll help you put things together. Ah. Barlow lens, ah, just as I thought. Um, it's probably not complete garbage, but um, I can tell from the feel of it through the plastic that this is probably 100% plastic. Yep, it is 100% plastic. Um, you could you could get a real decent um, a Celestron Omni Barlow. Uh, on the internet for about 25 bucks this is probably uh, this is as low grade as it gets again not their top of the line telescopes by any means but you know for 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 children and and anybody out there that's looking to start out this is a good place to start I I, uh, I have a lot of faith in what a lot of these guys do when it comes to putting things together for you uh, this is the finder scope it's actually, let's see, there you go, eh, same thing, plastic, nothing, uh, nothing special about it, very inexpensive, um, ah, yes, a little plastic piece over here, the, uh, release the battery you got two knobs on this side so you can adjust it um, and actually no this is the a knob to turn it on this is a knob to adjust and another knob at the bottom to adjust so I'm not gonna play with that too much uh, my intention is actually to 
um, have the kids take it apart and put it together. So the video is not going to be of me putting the whole thing together because I do want them to get that experience, right? So these kids that will be getting it, we'll be doing the work. Something to clean your uh, eyepieces with. Uh, very, very tiny. It'll do the job. And I presume in here we have the Star Sense. Oh, it's tied together. The little Star Sense cell phone holder. Yes, we do. Yeah, so basically, um, if you've ever used a uh, next next uh, nexyz cell phone adapter it looks exactly like that one um very 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 similar except for the top part that has a mirror so you basically open this apart you throw your cell phone in here um and then you would slide it left to right up or down depending on how large your cell phone is i, I presume from what it looks like it'll it'll take easily up to uh, the the iPhone Max or the Galaxy Note Pros, um, so they they will they will definitely suffice in in taking any cell phone that um, you have, and then you just take this top off, and right in here you have this little mirror. It's actually really really nifty. Um, uh, I, I believe the technology is called Plate. Uh, solving so what they do is they use uh, the software that um, looks at the sky through your cell phone and it allows the software to uh, find locations right so once you um, you know align everything which is actually pretty easy again after a few tries um, it's it's really good I had a lot of success with my 130 um, I, I, I live in a very light polluted area and um, I actually had never run into a, uh, an issue where I wouldn't find things. Um, so, you know, again, you know, keep in mind that uh, a lot of people will tell you it's not the best of scopes. And it isn't because it's tiny, but it'll, 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 it'll get you going. It'll definitely get you going. So we're gonna put this back in the box. Um, let's go a little bit over the tripod. Um, so, yeah, there will be, there's a pin, and there's, there's a pin in here that actually will go through here and screw it in so it kind of stabilizes it, but I, I can kind of tell, I, basically, with it, without it raised, it seems pretty sturdy. But once you start moving the telescope around, it will move. And I think the biggest issue that this has... Oh, nope. They're just not out all the way. I take that back. Now, it does have rubber... Um, rubber little shoes. No, they're not rubber. They're hard plastic. So, on cement, um, anything that actually isn't a soft ground, grass or anything, on cement, these things are... They're probably going to slide around. I don't know why they would have done this. This is, I'm actually a bit disappointed to find this out because my 130 actually did have really hard uh, rubber um, uh, little pins in here. So when you did put it on any surface, it, it would not slide around. This, this will slide around. This will move around. Uh, if you touch it, it will definitely move around. So um, keep that in mind. If you throw it on grass, you are good to go. Gravel or anything, it's not gonna move around. Um, show it to you a little closer. It's got a little knob here that will allow you to. Actually, I don't know what it does. Ah, it'll allow you to move this around. And if you tighten it in, it still moves around. Yeah, see, that's. What, oh no, it's it's locked into place. Uh, and this guy over here, I think, holds. The telescope. So let's see what we got going on here. Ah, I know what 
what those they gave us those two knobs for. Okay, so these guys back here, this is what you would use to collimate it if it needed collimation. Um, they do a pretty good job off the bat. This specific telescope, um, I believe it's referred to as a Bird Jones because of um, the way it's the way it's built internally. Um, a lot of people don't like these telescopes. Yeah. Wow, this is this is this is decent. It's small, but it's decent. I, I I think it's nice. I think it's a really nice starter. Um, there's some knobs up here, which I do not know what they. No, actually, they move the secondary mirror, so I'm not going to turn those guys. But essentially, what you would be doing is you would be placing this bad boy. In there and I think this guy may actually go in here oh I can't put it in because I have this guy oh, let's take it off put it back on so we will throw this guy in here yeah there you go and this is what you would use to turn, actually. Isn't that nifty? Up, down. Yeah, this is a fine little piece of tiny machinery. You take this little cap off. So this... I believe that little hole, sorry, that little hole here is so that you can actually put a sun filter on it if you choose to, so you could check out the sun, maybe, although that would be really, really small. There are some holes in here. If you take this cap off, these holes allow you to uh, collimate the secondary mirror. Um, let me put this back on so that I can explain a couple of small things. Um, so this specific type of telescope has two mirrors. One is the one that brings the image here and then the one in the back. This is called the primary, that's the secondary. So when you collimate one of these bad boys, whether it's this size or any other size really, if it's a refractor telescope, um, what uh, reflector? What it will do is it uh, the main mirror in the back looks out, gets the image, and it will reflect it into the secondary mirror up here, and then into your eyepiece. So when you collimate these things, you have to adjust the front, to make sure it's in the middle of the back, and you know there's a whole process you can find online on that. But um, you know for a tiny little telescope, this is this is pretty neat. Um, it's a good starter. Um, let's see. Show you this over here. It's a, it's a Star Sense Explorer LT 114AZ. It's got 144 millimeters by 1000. It's an f8.8. Um, I do suggest you go online and read about all of that stuff. It is very important to know. But. Um, yeah, this is a fun little doodad. Um, I presume I probably will make another video once I have them set this bad boy up and they take it up for a, for a test drive. But um, yeah, it's cool. You put the uh, so basically what you do is um, the the uh, the star sense holder that I. Uh, explained uh, earlier that holds the cell phone you put on this guy on top and that you know the cell phone will find the stars so you basically just you know um, look wherever it tells you to look so if it says hey you know um, you want to look at uh, Saturn and it's over there it'll actually uh, give you an error on screen and says you know move to that uh, location so you just turn this guy around which I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to do this and and move it so I can put it back together properly. But um, 
Yeah, it, 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 it finds everything for you. It gives you an arrow when you move it around. And as long as it's pointing at the sky when you're moving around and you're, you, you know, you're being mindful of how it works. And like I said, take your time with it. Um, it will it'll find what you need. And you can even click on those things that you're looking for. And um, it'll tell you a lot of information about them. So um, it's, it's, it's a good place to start. Uh, and I think that's why I like this star sense um technology because not only does it find things for you but it will you know it'll tell you about them you click on them it'll it'll give you a bunch of options and and it's an audio uh experience where you can learn um about what you're looking at so you're not just looking at a saturn and you don't know anything about saturn but if you click on it it'll actually give you a whole walkthrough of, of information, uh, a wealth of information about a lot of the things that it has under its uh, um, database so that, you know, you are uh, expanding your knowledge. Um, these little, this is the wheel that basically allows you to, uh, to focus. And I can tell you there is, there is no, there are some screws below it. So that may help you if you wanted to uh, kind of loosen the, um, experience here but uh, it's fairly tight not too tight but it does move I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised because it moves very very smoothly there, there are no jolts or or anything in between it just kind of it's, it's actually pretty neat um, uh, although it's super low quality compared to the 130az that I had this moves a lot smoother than the a30 which looked like it was a, a, a fairly better uh, piece of machinery when it came to the uh, to the eyepiece uh, zoom and the whole holder so um, yeah this is this is pretty neat I think uh, I think you you'll be able to zoom into something at low speeds without actually going past it right so uh, especially for for younger uh, people or very inexperienced people um, I think and I noticed that when I uh, started uh, using a telescope, um, that you will, you have the tendency to just overshoot things and then you find yourself going forward and backward and forward and backward and eventually if it's just too smooth it, it'll take you quite a few tries to actually get to where you're trying to get so um, yeah this is this is pretty this is pretty neat um, it's pretty fun so you can look not all the way up um, which is actually kind of a bummer because if anything is at a 90 degree angle, you are not going to look at it. You are probably only going to get somewhere around, I don't know, maybe 80 degrees or so, 85 at best. I don't know. Not an expert in that, but um, uh, that's it. That's that's all there is to it. Um, like I said, whenever I have this um, up and running, um, I will probably put a little uh, couple of minute video together. Um, of what it can do and um, maybe even attach the uh, the cell phone uh, holder to it to take a couple of pictures um, and show you what you could see. I presume that the moon is going to look really nice through this. Um, I wanted to do that tonight but unfortunately there is far too much uh, humidity and uh, the moon is actually very uh, not nice to look at <laughs> so um thanks for watching um and i hope this uh you know kind of helps you make a decision um again if you want to um get into this hobby uh this is probably a very low bottom of uh of a beginner telescope um it's 114 so it's not really going to be you know, you're, you're not going to see huge planets and, and, and whatnot. You will get a pretty decent view of the moon, I think. Um, and, and a lot of people can attest to this. When you look at the moon through any telescope or any binocular, anything that you haven't seen the moon through at a, at a fairly large zoom, it'll blow your mind. It's just something that you really, I don't think I can explain that on, on video. I remember the first time um, when I set up my eight inch telescope and I looked at the moon and, and I can see um, craters and, and, and whatnot, uh, you know, at a very large size, I, I was blown away. Even, even when I uh, had the 130AZ, actually the reason that I 
moved from the 130AZ to uh, an eight inch was that it, it, it literally, um, uh, it blew me away, right? So I, I, I used it for about two weeks or so and I, I was just so completely sucked into the hobby that um, I decided, wow, um, you know, um, it's, uh, I, I want to see more, <laughs> you, you know, because you're, you're pretty limited to, with this. Now, if you can go in a very dark sky uh, area, I presume you could probably see um, Andromeda very faintly if it's really, really dark. Um, you actually could probably see the Orion Nebula um, with this in, in dark skies and, and a few other things that um, even at this tiny little size, like I said, when you see it with your own eyes, um, it, it's it's an experience that words themselves can't can't really uh, you know hit hit the hit the mark. So um, yeah, get out there and try it out. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, clear skies.